Good morning, Infinity players. Polynikes here, and today I'm discussing discussing a tournament that I'm going to. Um, I'll go over my lists and a little bit about the missions, and um, yeah, see what we have to say. So first, the tournament here, organized by Judge Dredd, is in Sacramento, California, and the missions are Frostbite, Mind Wipe, and Unmasking. All these are really tough missions, but they also kind of share a lot of similar things, right? Go to the middle, hit some buttons, keep your guys alive, kill theirs, secure the center. Go to the middle, hit some buttons, kill their specific dudes. Unmasking? No, I'm sorry, other way, that was unmasking, right? Mind wipe, go to the middle, hit a button, protect a button, go over to their side of the board, kill something, and then unmasking. Hit it, go to the middle, hit some buttons, kill their specific dudes. So there's a lot of going to the middle and hitting buttons. And then of course killing things. Um, I like all these missions. I'm a fan of all of them. I think they're all tough. They all have a lot that you have to do. Mm. And yeah, I don't know if I need to go over any of them any more in particular. I do have them up here. This is Frostbite. Um, if you've watched my last couple of videos, there's been a lot of Frostbiting going on. It's a great mission. The heating units, you can destroy them. I've never seen anyone do it, but it's a thing. Connecting a console. Um, you get the biker in there, that's an extra specialist to go do it, which should affect how you make your lists, because you know you have one guy who can do it. You get a snow ops, which will get you an extra order for whoever's doing it. There's no retreat in Frostbite, which is an interesting thing to think about. Um, yeah, and that's Frostbite. Uh, the, let me see, classifieds in Frost, classifieds, that's one thing I always forget here. Oh yeah, three classifieds, lots of classifieds which again will affect list building because you want to have a spread of specialists. All right, Mind Wipe. One classified, get that out of the way. And then this is the one that has some randomness of your objective. You gotta go to the middle. What I do like about it, let me just go to the map for it here. I should have a map, yeah. There's two consoles for you to get here in the middle of the board and you can only get one of them and then your opponent has to get the other, which makes going first really interesting because you can set up to get one and protect one. Um, going first is really good in this mission basically for that. But there's no exclusion zone in this one, so your opponent can also set up to stop you from getting one, right? There's a hacker bonus in it, but they can deploy hidden killer hackers right next to it. And that you know makes that a good bit of a mind game going on. So that's really interesting. Uh, capture and protect used to be like this. I have two buttons, you have to hit one before you could pick up the thing. I thought it was a much better mission when it had this, and I was happy to see this mechanic come back in um, uh, Mind Wipe. And then the randomness of which you, know, you roll a d20 to figure out which one of these computer consoles you have to blow up. Um, I don't really care about that. That's fine. You, know, you figure out what you have to do. Uh, hackers are great in this because they get a plus three mod there. One of your hacker will be the specialist uh, Uber hacker, you know, the not data tracker for this mission. And this program here, I have not had a lot of success using. It's taken me like three or four orders to do one damage point because it's only um, burst one. And it is damage 17, but the target's be at, uh, BTS uh, 6, so getting wounds through on it is pretty hard. And in the last iteration of this mission, you had to do three wounds to it. And that made it really rough, because you get no objective points for doing one wound or two wounds. In the current iteration, you can see right here, if the structure is reduced to zero or below, it's destroyed and off the board. So you only have to do two damage to it, which makes the um, data erasure program much more interesting and effective. Okay, so briefly, third mission, which is unmasking. Um, another interesting mission, no classifieds in this one, which I think is neat, I like that. Three civilians out there, you have to hit a console to activate one, or to, to identify one, and then if it's the right one, well, whether, if it's the right one or not, go kill it. Um, yeah, again, good for hackers, because they get a bonus, right? Hacker bonus. Uh, there is an exclusion zone in this one, so it's a little harder to get to and protect the objectives early on. And remember that your opponent will be trying to get the same objectives you are, right? So you go up and hit one, identify, hit one, identify, hit one, identify, and then they'll be doing the same thing. So I really like skirmishing hackers because they usually have mines for this mission. And you can start, you know, deploy it a little bit. You move up, get the objective, move on, lay a mine, move on, lay a mine, get the objective, move on, lay a mine. Should be out of mines. Move again, right? Get that objective. That's, that's the theory. Never works out that easily, but if you can, do anything to um, hinder your opponent in getting those um, identifications off, that helps you quite a bit in this mission, because they really can't get the uh, the good 
objective points. We'll go back to that in a moment here. The good objective points before they do that, right? Three for killing the correct target. Each decoy is worth one, right? Kill any decoys. Kill more decoys is worth another one. And then at the game end of the game, activated consoles. Um, and then have more activated consoles. Okay, the same and more, yeah. And then have your guy not killed, right? So it's a five swing to get the right one killed. That's pretty much the game. All the other ones add up. Um, yeah, that's probably enough about the missions there. Um, I guess you can talk a little bit about how to defend your HVTs. People do all sorts of things, like some people like to put them all together so they can defend one area. I've tried that, had minimal success with it. Um, basically, just look for good spots. And if you try to mind game your opponent, it usually doesn't work. Like if there's one in the open, they'll just kill it because it's easy to kill and it's worth some points. So if you put the good one in the open, he'll just get killed. So because it is worth points to kill the decoys, usually you want to have your correct one as defended as possible, even if it's obvious that that's the one. Um, but I guess having said that, killing more than one is kind of a kind of a feat in this mission. I find that the number of targets killed on both sides is usually one or two at the most. So yeah, maybe you can mind game it a little bit. All right, my lists. First list I have here. This is a fairly standard shrouded list for me. Um, I guess it's a little bit geared towards Ariadna uh, because I've got two Taigas, which I love to run into their you know spam of camel markers in the midfield because they dodge really well and they can avoid the mines. They can uh, maybe guys reveal on them. If not, you can intuitive attack with your massive whip twelve. Right? I mean, maybe you get something out of that. Um, and then I got a sensor in there as well. Again, same kind of thing. If I can just gum up their midfield with this stuff and find their guys, then then my killers can kill them. All right, we'll have and a Yaogat sniper plus one burst MSV2. If I'm going first, they'll probably both be in reserve, so my opponent won't know where the MSV is coming from. I could probably might be able to read it out of where the daughter Asai are, that's fair, but not exactly. And then so once these guys run out and discover things, right, these guys can kill them. Of course, the Shrantid can just auto-discover kill also. Especially if he's doing it through smoke, it's very, very safe. I usually do that. That's pretty much the first turn if I'm playing against Ariadna and I'm going first. We kill everything we can see with those guys. Yes, we don't get a lot done in the first turn. That's fine, right? We work through all that stuff. Um, and then we've got mine layers, mine layers. This is in case I have to go second because, you know, they might rush you with a bear, might rush you with anapodes. I might rush you with stray locks. I don't know why this camera is suddenly not working. You can reset that. Nope. Okay, we'll just kill the camera. Okay, so I don't know um, if I have to go second against Ariadna. They're going to rush you with something here. So we got some mine layers to be in the way. We got some tigers can do a fine job of that being in the way. And you want to have these guys fairly well protected. You're pretty much turtling up at that point, right? Trying to hold them off with the the midfield guys and the uh, uh, the, the Taiga there. Mm. And for these specific missions, right, we have our Malingos hacker who can do the missions as we were talking about. He's got mines. He can get start midfield or as close as possible. He can get the uh, get the objectives with a hacker bonus. Um, the list is a little bit short on specialists, right? We've got the med tech, the Caliban, the Malingos, and that is it, right? Three specialists. So it's possible that uh, opponent could work on them. In Frostbite, you'll have the biker. We'll get you, give you an extra one. Um, but I do like this for all missions there, right? Because you got your Lingos who can get all the objectives there. Um, it probably is a little shy on uh, anti-material, which we'll need for uh, mine wipe. Yeah, mine wipe here when you when you get up there. We'll definitely use the Lingos as the uh, Uber hacker. Um, yeah, he can, he can do it now. He's being a killer hacker. He couldn't for a while. And he can try to do it with the program. It's not great. Otherwise, you're trying to get a Dada Rasai in there or the Osnat. It's possible, but not great. And of course, your Caliban has his D charges. Caliban is probably the more likely one to do it in, in all that. Um, I love the Caliban. He's great against everything. I chose the Engineer in this list uh, to help with classifieds. It could have been the Ford Observer. It was really close because that would also help with classifieds, and you get a flash pulse. And a boarding shotgun, which is really nice on this guy. But you don't get the pulsar, you don't get the submachine gun. It's a, it's a different kit. Um, and yeah, we went with this one. I might change that last minute, but I think I'll stick with the engineer. Um, okay, on to list two, which is much 
more interesting, kind of strange. It's an anathematic list. Anathematic is perfect for all three of these missions, right? He's a hacker. He gets that hacker bonus. He gets an extra order and mind wipe. He can go up there and do objectives. He can kill stuff. He's really good at it. Um, Dadarasa is there as general purpose, basically. He can throw smoke for the MSV here if he needs to. He can protect the anathematic from getting in close combat. M drone, fast specialist. Uh, also, I like to have sensor if I can. And it fits just fine here. And you got a Liberto again for drone purpose, right? R drones, Gaki, Imatrons. More interesting part of this list is group two, where we've got two Fractas, boarding shotguns and D charges. Right? Great for getting objectives that they can D charge, like in Mind Wipe. If, uh, <laughs> if I have to, I can coordinate order, jump both of them in. They each have two wounds, so they're going to land. So they're going to survive the landing, and then you can coordinate them onto the objective, right? <laughs> if that works. You have your E-drone for your assisted jump. Um, but yeah, that, that is kind of the plan, really, is not to use the Fractas in turn one. Turn one, use your Anathematic, your Caliban, your Liberto, your Gaki. Those are the primary turn one uh, plays here. You kind of want to get the Liberto and the Gaki killed in turn one so that you can move over the Fractas into group one on turn two and have them do all of what they need to do. And then, as is kind of what I'd like to do with bigger units, the Anathematic will be the turn three play. He will run out there in turn three, and by then, a lot of stuff will be dead, a lot of stuff will be spread out. He should be able to seal up anything that needs to be sealed up to win the game. This is a, is a strange list, for sure. Double Fractal seems fun. Um, you can definitely bring one in on turn one, if you something you have to fight past that that'll be good against. And then, on a, the opponent won't expect a second one, so that's pretty strong. Uh, Q-Drone providing his obvious covering fire. The E-Drone in there, again, if you use the E-Drone to upgrade the Q-Drone, that kind of pulls away from the uh, Fractas, the people expecting the jump troops. So I kind of like that idea. And the Fractas are a good chunk of points missing, and your SWC is low in this list, so your opponent will likely think Noctifer when they see your setup there. Especially after you have to see this big camera token show up. So you kind of, you know, telling or showing an octopher without actually showing it, but actually it's not there, it's two fractas. And I'm looking forward to playing that. It sounds exciting. So this tournament will be this weekend. I'll probably have this video go up on the day of the tournament. And then I'll do a little tournament report in the next week after. It might not be blow by blow every uh, order of every game, but it'll definitely be an overview of each game and how the two lists do, particularly the double fractal list, which looks like a lot of fun to me. Okay, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll let you know how the tournament went in a couple days.